the concept of the template and Indra's net. Aggregates and the bill of materials. We have provided three videos that explore the concept of the aggregate, the concept of aggregation, the conscious aggregate, and the types of aggregation. But an aggregate is a bill of materials, an inventory of the raw materials, assemblies, sub-assemblies, parts and components, as well as the quantities of each needed to manufacture a product. But a bill of materials alone is insufficient to create a three-dimensional structure. It may be the complete list of all the items that are required to build a product, but it is not possible to build the product with this alone. To create the final object, you also need the instructions on how to build it, and in cake making, called the recipe. And we have called this the template because it is more of an archetypal model that can be copied. Thus the template is a three-dimensional model of how all these parts fit together, where they go in relation to each other. And to provide an analogy of what we mean, we will use the example of the Meccano set. The Meccano Analogy Meccano is a construction game created in 1898 by Frank Hornby in Liverpool, England. Hornby was responsible for the invention and production of three of the most popular lines of toys based on engineering principles in the 20th century. Meccano Hornbeat model railways and dinky toys. The Meccano system consists of reusable metal strips, plates, angle girders, wheels, axles and gears and plastic parts that are connected using nuts and bolts. It enables the building of working models and mechanical devices. In 1913 a very similar construction set was introduced in the United States under the brand name Erector and in 1990 Meccano bought the Erector brand and unified its presence on all continents. Every Meccano set was supplied with a leaflet describing all the parts in the set and their number, strips, plates, nuts, bolts, winches, wires, wheels and even motors in the set and an instruction leaflet, describing how all these were used in order to construct some model or mechanical devices. The instruction leaflet was essential, as without it one had no idea how all these parts fitted together to make the model illustrated. And nature has the same thing, a set of invisible instructions that show how a finished aggregate must appear. This template is used when the aggregate is being constructed. So for example, when a fetus becomes a baby and then grows to become an adult. And it is used in repairing, healing the aggregate. And this should be evident to anyone who has watched a wound heal. Healing is a process that follows very definite steps depending where the wound is. There also seems to be some evidence that there is a template that is used in destroying the aggregate, what we call death. Aggregates and Integrated Systems 
If we use the human body as an example, it should be clear that all the organs and parts are joined together into one integrated system. Despite the fact that medicine has divided our body into specialities, what happens in one area of the body affects every other part. Remove an organ and you can upset the entire functioning of other organs. For example, it has been known for some time that if you perform a hysterectomy on a woman, it affects her ability to control her bladder. Medical news today, overactive bladder after hysterectomy, February the 2nd, 2023. Having a hysterectomy can affect bladder function. For some, this contributes to new or worsened overactive bladder symptoms, including frequent urination and strong, sudden urges to urinate. Some also experience urinary incontinence. In a 2019 study involving over 500 people who underwent a vaginal hysterectomy, 13.5% developed new OAB symptoms after the surgery. Additionally, if a person undergoes a hysterectomy, the oophorectomy, this involves removing the ovaries as well as the uterus, the ovaries produced oestrogen, and without them, oestrogen levels decline. Lower oestrogen levels can lead to vaginal atrophy and inflammation of the urethra, which may also lead to incontinence. Similarly, if you remove a person's gallbladder, the knock-on effects can be devastating. Indeed, a 29 systematic review found that around 40% of the people who had their gallbladder removed experienced adverse symptoms. Potential issues after gallbladder surgery by Sherry Christensen, May 11, 2023, medically reviewed by Jennifer Schwartz, MD. Some people experience persistent issues known as post-cholecystectomy syndrome after gallbladder removal surgery, cholecystectomy. Long-term effects can include fatty food intolerance, nausea and vomiting, flatulence, gas, indigestion, heartburn, Diarrhea, jaundice, yellow tinge to the skin and whites of the eyes, and episodes of abdominal pain. Long thought to be a useless organ that just caused agony if it became infected and caused appendicitis, only now has it been realised that the appendix contains top-up bacteria for your intestines, and that if you remove your appendix, any destruction of your gut bacteria by, for example, antibiotics, leaves it without any means of topping up its supply. Your appendix may not be useless after all. By Amanda McMillan, Time, January the 11th, 2017. The appendix notorious for its tendency to become inflamed or even rupture, has historically been viewed as a vestigial organ with no real function. But new research supports the idea that the appendix may indeed serve a purpose, to protect beneficial bacteria living in the gut. Species who had an appendix tend to have higher concentrations of lymphoid tissue in their cecum, a pouch that connects the small and large intestine. This type of tissue can play a role in immunity and can also stimulate growth of healthy gut bacteria. The appendix serves as a safe house for these beneficial bugs. Some studies have even shown that people without an appendix may have slightly higher rates of infection than those with a functioning organ. It may also take them slightly longer to recover from illness, 
especially those in which the beneficial gut bacteria have been flushed out of the body. So, medicine as it is currently practised, especially with its eagerness to remove organs that with better treatment might be saved, is making us ill, often very ill. Phantom Limbs A phantom limb is an imaginary limb. The patient experiences the sensation of having a limb, painful or otherwise, even though the limb does not exist. Between 80 to 100% of amputees experience their missing phantom limb, and as the NIH say, typically it has a chronic cause, often resistant to treatment. How Phantom Limbs Explain Consciousness by Michael Graziano The Atlantic During his disastrous naval assault on the city of Santa Cruz de Tenerife, Lord Nelson was shot in the arm. He had to have part of it amputated. This being 1797, the amputation was done by knife without anaesthetic. He seems to have been a good sport about the accident, especially since, in a sense, he never lost the arm. For the rest of his life, he could sense it, as though the appendage were extending invisibly from the stump. He supposedly claimed that he now knew there had to be an afterlife, because if his arm could have a ghost, then so could he. In other words, this template of a limb can be experienced even when the limb no longer exists. Or to put it another way, the model of ourselves exists beyond our perception and is used to build our body, heal our body and give it some connectivity with our mind so that we can work with it. And even when we lose a part of our body, it may still act as though it was there, whilst not actually physically having any effect. But the template that describes our bodies and how each organ is linked to other organs is only the beginning. And one person who recognised this years ago and described the world as a vast integrated system has been Fritjof Capra. Fritjof Capra Fritjof Capra many years ago realised that we do not understand just how integrated the systems of the universe are. Fritjof Capra, the system's view of life, a unifying vision. There are solutions to the major problems of our time, some of them even simple, but they require a radical shift in our perceptions, our thinking, our values and indeed we are now at the beginning of a fundamental change of worldview in science and society a change of paradigms as radical as the Copernican revolution and that change requires us to recognize the integrated nature of all systems all the things on earth that when an animal defecates, for example, he is providing nutrients for plants. As such, plants and animals are part of an interdependent system. Our poo is their food. Fritjof Capra The Tower of Physics An exploration of the parallels between modern physics and Eastern mysticism. Quantum theory reveals a basic oneness of the universe. It shows that we cannot decompose the world into independently existing smallest units. As we penetrate into matter, nature does not show us any isolated building blocks, but rather appears as a complicated web of relations between the various parts of the whole. And that web is invisible to us. But long, long ago, this complicated web of interdependent parts was recognised in the Far East 
and given the name of Indra's Net. Indra's Net By understanding that everything is connected, that the earth Gaia is one whole, and that if we cause imbalance in one part, it has an effect on the entire earth, we can be introduced to the concept of Indra's net. Symbolically, Indra's net is an infinitely large net owned by the Vedic Deva Indra, which hangs over his palace on Mount Meru, the Axis Mundi of Buddhist and Hindu cosmology. In East Asian Buddhism, Indra's net is considered as having a multifaceted jewel at each vertex, with each jewel being reflected in all of the other jewels. Francis Cook Far away in the heavenly abode of the great god Indra, there is a wonderful net which has been hung by some cunning artificer in such a manner that it stretches out infinitely in all directions. In accordance with the extravagant tastes of deities, the artificer has hung a single glittering jewel in each eye of the net. And since the net itself is infinite in dimension, the jewels are infinite in number. There hang the jewels, glittering like stars in the first magnitude, a wonderful sight to behold. If we now arbitrarily select one of those jewels for inspection and look closely at it, we will discover that in its polished surface there are reflected all the other jewels in the net, infinite in number. Not only that, but each of the jewels reflected in this one jewel is also reflecting all the other jewels, so that there is an infinite reflecting process occurring. In Huayan texts, In the Huayan school of Chinese Buddhism, which follows the Buddha Vatamsaka Sutra, the image of Indra's net is used to describe the interconnectedness or perfect interfusion of all phenomena in the universe. In other words, Indra's net is adopted as a metaphor for the manner in which each thing that exists is dependent for both its existence and its identity upon every other thing that exists. Each and every jewel simultaneously and immediately reflects each and every other jewel ad infinitum. The image of each of these limitless jewels is within one jewel, appearing brilliantly. None of the other jewels interfere with this. When one sits within one jewel, one is simultaneously sitting in all the infinite jewels. The net was one of the weapons of the sky god Indra used to snare and entangle enemies. According to Teon Gudrian, Indra is conceived as a great magician, tricking his enemies with their own weapons, thereby continuing human life and prosperity on earth. Summary In this video we have explored how an invisible template is used to model the interconnectivity of the physical body, but we also show that this same template even models a body that is incomplete because of amputation. We then extended the idea further using the theories of Rischoff Capra, who pointed out that the human body can no more be isolated from its surroundings than a plant. All is one integrated system. Gaia is one. And finally we examined Intra's net, 
that covers all forms of connectivity, physical, transient, interdependence and cooperation, and how Indra has woven this net so that any attempts to break the links that bind us together only serve to destroy the one who attempts it. Fritjof Capra The Tower of Physics An Exploration of the Parallels Between Modern Physics and Eastern Mysticism As long as we confuse the myriad forms with reality, without perceiving the unity of Brahman and denying all these forms, we are under the spell of Maya. In the Hindu view of nature, then, all forms are relative, fluid and ever-changing Maya. The world of Maya changes continuously. Thank you.